Okay, so ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. We'll discuss this now. Um, so you see, um, previously we discussed the Carnot cycle, the reversed Carnot cycle. So when we discussed the Carnot, reversed Carnot cycle, we know in reverse Carnot cycle we have got some impracticalities, and to you know, eliminate those impracticalities. What we can do, we can um, introduce a new re cycle. So how we can do that? Maybe you can see the schematic of the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. And if you closely look at this, all the physical components, what we can see from here, the basic things are same, uh, but here we have got expansion valve, right? So previously, when we discussed the Carnot, you know, the reverse Carnot cycle, uh, we had the turbine. Here, we just replace the turbine by using the expansion valve. So, what we said in reverse Carnot cycle uh, have some impracticalities, and what we can do, we can eliminate those impracticalities by, you know, evaporate. You know, by so here it is the this is the evaporator right so we can just vaporize the refrigerant or this refrigerant it is the you know the working fluid so the we can vaporize the refrigerant completely completely before it enters into the compressor that's the first thing and the second thing we can replace the turbine by using an expansion valve so that resultant cycle when we did these two things we just you know vaporize the refrigerant completely and we replace the turbine we use a throttling device let's say expansion valve or capillary tube whatever you want so then this cycle it will it will be defined as the vapor compression refrigeration cycle so that's the basic difference between the reverse Carnot cycle and the vapor compression refrigeration cycle we will completely evaporate we'll completely vaporize we'll completely vaporize the refrigerant um, before it enters into the compressor and we will you know replace the turbine and we'll use the throttling device throttling tubes or expansion valves so as usual um here we'll have four different um four processes so if you closely look at these processes here this from this ts diagram this is actually one to two process one to two you can clearly see this is isentropic compression two to three this is actually the um, constant pressure heat rejection in the condenser when we have this condenser here it will reject the heat to the warm you know the environment so it will be uh, you know the heat rejections then again from three to four previously we knew that okay it was uh, you know isentropic expansion but here you, you will see it will be an expansion throttling expansion um, it will not you know isentropic changes we'll discuss later on and from four to one it will be constant pressure heat absorption in the evaporator it will absorb the heat from low medium you know low temperature source so that's the overall procedure actually um, some physical thing happen here so let's try to understand this how this uh, this you know processes works so at this process one here if you see this dome uh, this line the saturated um, curve you can see this is this this point one it is just on top of the line so this is actually saturated vapor you know this is the vapor region this is the liquid region this is the mixture region right so this curve it is actually this saturated vapor so initially the refrigerant um, you know once it vaporizes it will be at saturated liquid saturated vapor at this state so this saturated vapor it will enters into this compressor so at state one the working fluid enters into the compressor as a saturated vapor okay and it will compress isentropically so we need uh, some work input here so when it will compress that means the temperature pressure will increase so you see a significant increase the temperature of the pressure at a state two it will be superheated vapor 
at this point it will be superheated vapor now at this point uh, you see this superheated vapor it will enters into the condenser and the condenser now it will it will cold by rejecting the heat to the surroundings it will reject the heat to the surrounding the hot medium so that means the temperature here you see it's decreasing the temperature will decrease because it's rejecting the heat and it will be a constant pressure uh, heat rejection we will discuss that one when we will uh, discuss the the p haze curve so here you see from 2 to 3 um, actually the constant pressure heat rejection happen in this condenser so now <coughs> when the working fluid will leave this condenser it will be as a saturated liquid at a state 3 so saturated liquid here so this saturated liquid now enters into this expansion valve from 3 to 4 this process so it will be some expansion and now in this case you can see it's not any more isentropic expansion but if we replace this expansion valve and use a turbine so then this process curve in a state of 3 to 4 3 to 4 it will be 3 to 4 dash you know what I mean I said if we replace this expansion valve if we put a turbine here then it will be 3 to 4 dash um, that we can discuss later on then finally um, you know at this state the it you see it will enter into the evaporator in the evaporator um, it will absorb the heat from this cold refrigerant space or you can say the low temperature source so it will guide the heat here and you know it will vaporize the refrigerant and then it will be saturated liquid here it will enter into the in the process one and in that way it will complete the cycle so this is actually this ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle this is the you know widely used cycle actually if we if we say refrigerator heat pumps or the air conditioning system we mostly use this you know the ideal vapor compression cycle refrigeration cycles so from this physical uh, diagram and this ts diagram we try to understand um we try to understand actually how it's happening you know so the basic difference here you, you can see um we said it is a constant pressure heat rejections, a constant pressure heat, heat absorptions. We'll try to compare actually TS and the P Hayes uh, diagram later on. So now, um, if we say uh, all these devices, you see, it is actually the steady state device, the steady flow devices. So we can say, we can do some steady flow analysis for this whole system. Um, so actually here, uh, you can see we have the heating from the the you know this is the source you can say the low temperature source or the refrigerant space we have the heat rejection here we have the work in here so we do not need uh, any actually you know the work output or anything here especially for the throttling device the throttling device or you know the expansion valve or the capillary tubes we do not need anything so we have a couple of things the heat in the heat out and the work in so we can do the energy balance this way okay the difference of the heat in and heat out work in what out work out and the enthalpy and it will be equal to the enthalpy difference we know we discussed so this sort of thing so when it will solve some technical problem we actually if we want to need to do some energy balance we need to use this formula and now previously we discussed the coefficient of performance of the refrigerator and the heat pump so heat pump refrigerator this is the same you know it is the same similar device with the same component but um, actually the the ultimate and the goal is different um, for this both devices that we discussed earlier I'm not going to discuss here so what uh, we know the coefficient of you know uh, performance is for refrigerant it is QL and the networking for heat pump Q haze and um, network input so you, you may ask okay why it is QL and it is Q haze so I will tell you um, see the videos from uh, chapter 6 we discussed this is actually the desired output here for refrigerator oh actually we want to keep this uh, refrig you know we actually want to keep this uh, refrigerated space cool so that means 
we this is QL it is actually the desired output here but when it is the heat pump for heat pump actually this is the um, desired output because for heat pump we actually want to keep the room warm so that one Q has it will be actually the desired output so that we write down here so when it is QL it is happening in between this point 0.1 and point 0.4 so that means the enthalpy difference of H1 H4 and the working is it is happening in process 1 to 2 so H2 H1 similarly um, for a heat pump so now um, we will calculate actually at this point H1 it is you know the saturated uh, uh, you know the vapor so we will use uh, that table the saturated vapor table and for H3 this is saturated liquid so we will use um, the you know, the saturated uh, property table and uh, we will calculate it for at for given temperature P1 and P3 so uh, that's actually the first part of this video in, in the so now I will um, make another video for the second part where I will discuss actually the you know the TS diagram and the pH diagram so the pressure enthalpy diagram and temperature entropy diagram and we'll try to understand the correlations between these two cases so that's the first part and for better understanding yeah go through the second part of this video